Hey guys, what's up? Wagyu. I've got a little mind goblin in my head about how lore is actually recorded in game. And I think everything in the game isn't how we think it is. So welcome to a video of someone who just does not want to believe. This video is gonna go over the rarity of every item in the game and how it affects the lore that we have. Whether or not rarity is affected by Ermin's soul changes, other aspects of the game that may or may not affect the loss of lore, and a take on what all of this could mean in the future. Of course, this is just a theory and it won't be how the game is actually written. Timestamps below, let's get started. Something that I, and maybe what you guys might have noticed about every single item in the game, is that they are all assigned a certain level of rarity. Now, rarity in simple terms indicates how powerful or how rare and hard to get craft or find something is. Now, what if the rarity of the item affects the amount of lore that that item has? I mean, of course they would. It's how developers write their fluff. But the Hoyo introduced something to Genshin that more or less muddles the way lore in the game is actually told. That is, changing history by playing a bit of hacker man with the ermine soul and it affects nearly every person who is tied to the vat as well as every written text that may have been conducted ever the easiest example is information about scaramouche uh, i mean wanderer where he deletes himself or at least his name thereby changing what happened in history i won't go over history versus memory here at least not yet but i am aware that no change happens in the actual events of history as well as books being the only thing that changes but in some weird way every person's memory memory of how things happened changes. But let's go back to history changing just to keep things simple. Depending on the rarity of something in Genshin, they may or may not include a vague, simple description or a short story related to it. But because of the way Urban Soul changes history, any changes related to that item should technically change the way the artifact writes its lore. For example, maybe Salvin Dagnir summoned Durin instead of Conria, and Conria was Salvin Dagnir all along. But then someone, like maybe a princess who could access the Urban Soul, tried to delete their whole existence and everything about them. Then, by following what happened with Scaramouche, every written data about Sal Vindagnir should change, and every person in Vindagnir will be named something else or will not be remembered by every person in Tevat, as well as remembering them as an old kingdom under the snow of the current Dragonspine, and that Kanria was destroyed but never expounded upon. None of what I said makes sense because it's just a random example. Unless... No, I'm kidding. Sal Vindagnir can't possibly be Kanria, right? Uh, oh boy. But you get what I mean. If something as prominent as maybe an Archon or a huge city just disappears from existence, Urban Soul just adopts the closest and most convenient person, place, or item next to it and write it as the same-ish events with a bit of Urban Soul spaghetti. Rukodivara just becomes Kusanali by way of relation, and Skaramouche, messing up the ride in Gokaden, becomes a nameless angry smith. Yet we never really ask Skaramouche what he did before he got to Sumeru. As well as voice lines about Skaramouche, from A, Child and Yaimiko is virtually removed. All the while, any written text is changed in the same relatively convenient way. Basically, any written text or voice text is changed in some relatively convenient way, or is just completely deleted. Which drives my anxiety to the roof because what if there were more instances of that happening? One example is Makoto and A, where everybody except A does not remember that the Sakura tree actually never existed since Makoto passed on, and only A remembers that there was never a sakura tree to begin with. This puts a damper on things when you count other factors like Venti who's sus as ever and Zhongli who remembers almost everything possibly in the last 6,000 years. Now here's where we start with one of the weirdest items in the game that we all possess and farm daily. Artifacts start from the rarity 1 through 5, with each varying rarity and item having some form of story. 1 star artifacts with simpler information, 1 to 2 star artifacts with a bit more details, 2 to 3 star artifacts include more notable characters as well as leaving a mark of more or less important events or stories in history. Finally, 4 to 5 stars which include even more notable characters and events in history. Much bigger events such as the Cataclysm and characters like Archons are 
are one example. It's also worth noting that artifacts are one of the main ways we can get lore about Tavat. To my understanding, artifact lore isn't affected by changes in the Ermin Soul, as seen in the Opulent Husk set. But from the recent artifact set, Nymph's Dream, it seems we'll be getting some pieces of obfuscated lore, something that even Nahida seems to have difficulty cleaning up, even though she and her consciousness is tied to the Ermin Soul, and maybe at some point, even completely changed lore. Hopefully, that won't be the case. Artifacts are one thing, but many weapons in the game are also tied in with what artifacts speak of. One example is the Wanderer's Troop lore, which is connected to weapons such as the Flute and Stringless. The same goes for 5-star weapons as well. Imagine if lore from Skyward Atlas, which is tied to the Valen, Durin, and Venti was changed. Then the events that happened in the Archon Wars, the Cataclysm, and even Mondstadt and Vindagnir could have ended differently from what we know and what we were told of. Next is items in-game. Now each varying level of items also has their different information. But that's also because each item drop is a completely different item from the other, even though we can upgrade them for some reason. But most of them come up to the rarest which is 4 stars, with the exception being ascension materials, which start from simple pieces which slowly become more complex and intricate after either upgrading or simply finding them. The way each item drop can be upgraded and changes its lore is also interesting, because you're not only making the item's level or rarity higher, you're also making the information on it more detailed and complex. A very peculiar yet familiar tone, because artifacts can also be upgraded using other artifacts. And the same way items in-game get more detailed as you upgrade them, the memories of an artifact, which is how artifacts themselves are manifested, can be made clearer and stronger using not only other artifacts but with sanctifying essence, which are ideals and memories distilled into containers. But Aru, you can't change item lore. There's 4 stars and 5 stars. They can't be changed just like you told us, right? Well, to me, why don't we talk about how you ran out of red gemstones and used the alchemy table? Or that one time you got too many artifacts and changed it for better rolls? How about that other time you got too many plumes from the Valin way back when you were AR30? Dust of Azoth or Azoth, which is used to transmute crystallized elemental gemstones. Yeah, that's right, you're using weird dust to transmute crystallized elemental substances. And not only that, Dream Solvent dissolves that which is obtained from memory and transforms it into some other dream, as said in its description. Again, dreams and memory. This is why I firmly believe that memory is what changes and not Tevat itself. As Nicole says, history does not easily change, but human hearts can. And that means something. I, I know it does, and I'm not crazy for thinking it. Anyway, something interesting about Gemstone is that one of them also possesses obfuscated information, similar to Nim's dream and similar to the obfuscated information that Nahida might have come across. It also doesn't help that this Gemstone comes from Natlan, a place shrouded in war where victors rise up and losers are turned into ash. This hides a deeper meaning to simply winners and losers of a war, which I think is connected to the Primordial One and the Dragon Lords that I will of course mention later. But these are the very few items in game that have obfuscated data. Now, let's go back to the Ermin Soul real quick. The Ermin Soul tree's data changes depending on who or what is erased from its records, or if someone powerful enough alters the data, and thereby altering everything else into that. Any information that is removed from the previous setting of events will become known as anonymous data, which is interesting considering whatever data is set in Ermin Soul changes the way everyone remembers things. Swapping data with each other can basically mean whoever has access to Ermin Soul and can reliably change its data can rewrite how everyone remembers everything that happened ever. It's as if everything that is tied to the game can easily change just by retyping and rewriting Ermin Soul's records. Which is why I think that only memories are changed, because everything that happens in history has already happened, but you can still change how people remember it. Again, as mentioned by Nicole. Books in the game do change depending on the changes that Ermin Soul has. And if items in game can be tied to Ermin Soul, then who's to say that books are also tied to the Ermin Soul changing? The best example is research on Scaramouche changing after he erased his existence. And everything about Ruka Devata is changed to Kusanali. But changes only 
affect those with names related to it, as well as similar iterations of the same events, which is the reason allegory isn't affected. But allegorical books can be interpreted in a multitude of ways depending on the person's perspective. I could say that Vera's melancholy is about Conria, and someone else might say that it's about Enconomia. To me, these books and the changes are said to be affected by Erminsel itself, and is the reason information from written text can change. There are, however, books that do contain non-allegorical information that isn't changed by Erminsel. One example are stone carvings and, possibly by extension, the Byaku Yakoku collection. Zhang Li mentions that he writes down history as it passes by on stone carvings and that stone carvings are one way of preserving history. Yet he also mentions one glaring flaw in this strategy and is what every archon and possibly every living being experiences. Erosion is as it states, the eroding of something over time, and that includes stone carvings. In Tavat's case, it's memories, and even archons or gods aren't immune to this law or principle of the world. Interestingly, each archon has their own way of remembering the past. Venti has his ballads, Zongli and his stone carvings, A and Makoto's sakura tree, and now Nahida and her allegories, as well as her connection to Erminsul. Some are better than others, but of course, they have their own ways. Finally, dragons. Dragons seem to be affected by erosion as well. One example is Aesdaha's quest. But what about the Valin and the Pep? What about the dragon of water in Enconomia? Is it different from Fontaine's dragon? And if so, what about the dragon of Fontaine? Is every dragon the same as the dragon lords before? What about Natlan and Snaznaya's dragons? Durin from Conria? Can their lore and history be changed as well? And can it also affect their own memories and how everyone remembers them too? which includes the Archons themselves. Finally, Nibelung, or Nibelung, who was dubbed the Dragon King that tried to use forbidden knowledge to fight against the heavenly principles. What about that history? Is it also affected? Does everyone remember Nibelung differently than others? All of this ties to what Apep says about the victors of war. In war, the victor would inherit the right to shape the world, while the losers must turn into ash. And not only that, it also ties in with what Dainsleep says. The rules of war are woven in the womb. The victors shall burn bright, while the losers must turn to ash. When the god of war shares this secret with the traveler, it is because she has her reasons. So is history what we have been told all these years? Or is it just fabricated by whoever won the heavenly war? And I can't believe I'm saying this. In the words of Winston Churchill, history is dictated by the victors. But of course, I'm just theorizing, obviously, all the lore we have is actually real lore and none of it can change no matter what anybody does and Celestia can never really change how lore is written. Maybe. And there you have it, a little mind goblin that's been eating away at me since 3.0. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like, comment your thoughts below if I'm still crazy, which I usually am. And if you watched until this point, I suggest you subscribe and hit that bell for more of my videos. Now, I firmly believe that history doesn't change, just how everyone remembers it. And Ermin Soul just rewrites every book that it can, depending on what sort of change has been made in its data. And since nearly everything in Tevat is tied to the Ermin Soul, then any change to its data can easily change other data in game, be it people or books. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe for my ramblings, and stay mad theorists. Bye!